Hello, and welcome to Procedural Modeling for Production in Houdini. I'm going to start off with some introductions. First, I'm going to introduce myself and my connection with Houdini and the industry. Then I'll introduce the concepts of procedural modeling and the power behind a procedural approach. And finally, I'll introduce our course and go over what we'll be covering over the next six weeks and what you can expect to get out of the class. To begin, I'm Sean McEwen, and I'm a Houdini artist focusing on proceduralism. I'm currently working as a procedural environment artist. Typically what I'll do on a film is my department will work with the design department to figure out what the worlds of the film should look like, and then we'll determine which parts of the environment make sense to build from a procedural approach. And from there, I'll work with my team to break down how we should approach the different challenges that each particular environment provides. Over my career, though, I found myself in a few different roles. Before becoming an environment artist, I was a set dresser, an effects artist, even did a bit of crowd work and generalist work. But my passion has always been Houdini, and my focus has always been on its procedural strengths. In over eight years in the industry, I've worked on a variety of film and television projects, such as Shazam, The Book of Life, and Ad Astra, among many others. I've learned a lot during that time, and I'm excited to have the opportunity to share that with you. So before we talk about what we're going to cover in this class, let's briefly discuss procedural modeling as a general concept. Why proceduralism? What are the advantages of creating something procedurally versus the traditional method of modeling by hand? To answer that question, let's look at some images of the types of things that might lend themselves well to proceduralism. There's many advantages to proceduralism, but at its core, its main strength is its ability to create complex things in a more controllable way than traditional modeling. For instance, if you were to model several gears non-procedurally, you might craft the teeth by hand, making different teeth per gear size, and making sure that the teeth are the right size to duplicate around the perimeter of the gear, and so on. But with a procedural setup, you could create a single set of rules that divide the perimeter of the gear into a user-defined set of teeth and have controls of the height and shape of those teeth. So after you have a setup to build one size of gear, you have a setup to build any size of gear. Or let's take something like moss. By creating this procedurally, we can use noise functions to give some randomization to how the moss should be created. And we can define where the moss is placed by painting onto our surface. So if we want to change how the moss is laid out, we simply repaint where the moss grows. Or maybe it's something as simple as a road. With proceduralism, we can generate a road along a curve and easily go back and modify the curve to change the shape of the road. You could create a large quantity of items that share similar characteristics but have some slight variation or repetition of an aspect of an object, like a single stair being repeated to create a staircase. This can be used to create complex patterns that are duplicated and repeated. Man-made environments, such as architecture, often consist of repeated structures and supports, seats and beams, staircases, windows and doors, planks and pillars and cables. And on a larger scale, the foundational structure of buildings and skyscrapers and roads follow similar rules in how they should all be created, with a certain degree of variation between each object. We can see the power of proceduralism in recreating nature as well. Repetitions and patterns and rule sets are everywhere in nature. It can be used to generate rocky and mountainous surfaces from noise patterns that would otherwise be tedious and time-consuming to create by hand. So now let's take a look at this in practice by seeing some examples of proceduralism being used in the industry today. Procedural modeling tools are currently most commonly implemented in environment work. These types of workflows help artists create large, complex sets without the need to create everything by hand. Disney has used procedural workflows to create the city in Zootopia and the city of San Francisco in Big Hero 6. At ILM, they procedurally generated the construction framework of the Triskelion in Ant-Man. Weta frequently uses procedural techniques to create the complex worlds their characters exist in. In Mortal Engines, they use proceduralism to generate everything from cities to landscapes to war-torn battlefields. In War for the Planet of the Apes, they built a procedural system to dress their environments with fallen snow. Procedural plants are used commonly to create vegetation and entire forests. This is used in everything from Jurassic World to Jungle Book to King Kong, from Avengers to Star Wars. Procedural techniques are also used frequently in the game industry. Marvel's Spider-Man created an entire city for players to explore, everything from the buildings to trees to things you find on the sidewalk. Horizon Zero Dawn built procedural rivers and riverbeds and cables growing through tunnels. Square Enix has a procedural building modeling tool. Proceduralism is a growing presence in the industry, and I'm very excited to start exploring some of these concepts with you. I hope you enjoy the class, and I'm looking forward to seeing all of your awesome procedural work.